Greetings and salutations. Welcome to 80scomics.com for a review of the Warlord issue number seven. The only thing I like better than the 80s is the 70s. And with a cover like this, can you argue? You can't. Look at that. It's amazing. This makes you want to read the comic right here. And before I get started in this fantastic issue, let's take a look at the date because it's important. June, July 1977. For those of you who maybe don't know, May of 77 is when Star Wars came out the first time. And Star Wars was like a life-changing event for the whole, the whole era, really. All this fantasy stuff went away fairly quickly and was replaced by science fiction. That's sad, not that the sci-fi stuff is bad, but I, I do I do like the fantasy stuff. It was never quite as popular again after Star Wars. Star Wars changed everything, so it would have been really cool to be a little bit older than I was in 77. <laughs> Nobody took me to the movie back then. The first Star Wars I saw was Empire, but story for a different time. I'll stop nerding out on Star Wars for just a few moments. To concentrate on Warlord number seven, which I can't say is disappointing, but you know what I like about Warlord? It has a Conan vibe without being Conan. That's what I like most about it. It's like it's kind of like Conan, but weirder, with a little more of a sci-fi. Like a, it's just a different feel. And this one feels a little bit more like Conan. Like in the beginning here, the Warlord and this beautiful woman wearing brown slacks enter enter this town filled with savages and maniacs and of course she's immediately assaulted and what does the warlord do morgan he kicks all their asses which is straight out of conan's playbook like that's what conan would do like conan may have been just you know a mindless drunkard drunken thug but, but he was always very chivalrous when it came to saving ladies being attacked by a bunch of goons in a back alleyway. To Conan's credit, he was good at that. Then he usually would just pass out and you know let them be eaten by dragons later, but at least he saved them so that the dragons could be fed. The Iron Devil! At last, you can fly a Superman kite. Admit it, that looks kind of cool. Alright, so we got the Warlord here kicking ass. He saves her, but... Actually, she saves him. I'm sorry. She shoots this one guy in the back. This is important here because she's like, Oh, I saved somebody wearing my brown slacks. But then they melt her gun down and make swords out of it. So that's cool. And then she gets a new outfit. It's so incredible. I feel like Mike Grell, the artist and writer, should win the Nobel Peace Prize or, I don't know, something important for this. Hopefully she's got that super glued down. But somehow I don't feel very inconspicuous. Maybe not. But it's what the well-dressed barbarian would wear. <laughs> Come on, let's go pick up our new swords. Where do you get this today? You don't. The Warlord. If these videos do anything, they gotta bring this comic back. Or at least make you laugh for like, you know, two minutes. So anyway, where was I? I've, it's, it's, so easy, it's so easy to get distracted reading these. They look so good. Why'd they paint her? Like, she went from button down and tan slacks and ponytail to redhead Farrah Fawcett, but like 10 times the more bad attitude. It's like Farrah Fawcett if Farrah Fawcett was hired for Zardoz and not on as many drugs. So, uh, this is issue seven. 35 cents. I've got uh, three, I got five, I got seven. I'm missing four and six, the uh, even numbers. So I'm missing a bit of the story here. But he ends up meeting this girl in some kind of future city after riding the monorail. I'm actually looking forward to reading that issue. And uh, she's the she's a Russian. She was the Russian national saber champion for six years straight. So basically, she can kick his ass. Even though they immediately get locked in prison. It's an awesome comic. Slim Jim, after all that, what's important here is that his friend, he, he runs into his friend Machista again. Who we remember from issue five. 
uh, prior to them being attacked by the dinosaur in the ravine. Now, I'm not sure what happened in issue six, but it seems like he went somewhere else for a while and ended up and uh, found a magic battle axe, which turns him crazy. <laughs> it's very Conan. I, I, it's like a magic battle axe that he can't let go of. He can't drop this thing. So he ends up, oh, there's a whole bunch of crappy advertisements. You got to go through them. So he tells the story here, and, and this is Magic Axe, which is like the ring from Lord of the Rings. Basically turns him crazy and evil, and he just starts threatening people and not acting like himself. I'm not going to give away the ending, but you do get a special discount on fishing rods. I'll just say this. It's savage, and it's awesome, because it's the Warlord. I have not yet read a Warlord that disappoints. And you know what that means? That means you, you won't read a warlord at this if you're still watching these videos you're not gonna you're not gonna read one of these things and be like well that sucks mark doesn't know what he's talking about you're gonna read this and be like holy shit mark knows exactly what he's talking about because it's true can you argue with this cover you can't and you can't argue with the warlord or else he'll kill you because that's you know it's pretty much how he rolls it's savage issue seven here on 80s comics.com Like just, just think. June, July, 77. All, all of the primitives who were reading this comic book back in the day when it was new had just seen Star Wars. Like before it got turned into theme parks and stuff. 